Hello and welcome. I have a very thick book haul for y'all because I have a problem and I am not about to go to any kind of therapy for it because I don't think it's hurting anybody. Um, but first I do have a package I need to open from the Vintage Viking. He sent me a box of what I am assuming is books. I also have uh, a couple of books from Matt over at Bookpilled that he sent me in addition to ones I bought from him. So let's let's get into it. So this is oh Jesus this box is seen some better days. <laughs> so this is ooh, this is the box that Viking sent to me. As you can see it is uh is struggling. So let's see what he got or gave me I should see what I got and what he gave to me. Of course gave me a cute little message. So Ryan, thank you very much. I will stick that to my folder of messages. Ooh. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, so I have a, a list down below of book requests because there are some of the vintage and uh, actually some of the modern Nebula Award winners uh, for best novel that I'm having difficulty finding on my own and he sent me some and they are very nicely packaged and he sent me two hardcovers too which you know I love which means I'm definitely going to be keeping these so he sent me a copy of Kim Stanley Robinson's uh, 2312 again all three of these are Nebula Award winners so I will be reading them and hopefully reviewing them this year and Moving Mars by Greg Bear. Greg Bear is absolutely impossible to find around here in my thrift stores. I don't know if maybe it's because he recently passed and so his books are currently at a premium, which again, Ryan, I thank you so much for sending me this because I probably wouldn't have been able to have find it, found it. Actually, the cover is amazing. So Ryan, thank you so much. This is very exciting. Uh, I don't think I would have been able to have found this unless like I had to go give uh, Bezos some more money. Ooh, and then Gateway by Frederick Pohl. I'm guessing this is a book club edition, which is awesome. Um, I, it's a hardcover, that's all I really care about. I've got a great spaceship on the front. Uh, I don't think I've read anything from Frederick Pohl, so that'll be a good start. And then there are lots of this, uh, which I will happily reuse because I do resell. And then he sent me some bonus books which look to be about dragons because <laughs> of my dragon tattoo, but my dragon tattoo is actually uh, from a book reference. But I love dragons of all kinds. Here's so what I found. Uh, Siri was thinking I wanted to look up about a Mexican actress and I have no idea why in the world Cyril thought that. So this is Dragonology, this actually I think was probably for sale when I worked at Barnes and Noble uh, eon ago. So that would have meant this would have been from like the mid 2000s. Yep, 2003. I actually worked for Barnes and Noble, goodness, like 2004, 2005. So yeah, I knew exactly where this was from because I sold this. I think we sold the blue one as well, the Wizard of Oz, which is on the back. Yeah, we sold all three of these. So this with this gave me some nostalgia feels because I worked at Barnes and Noble and that is a thing. And then there are three other books. This is The Practical Guide to a Dragon Writing, The Practical Guide to Wizardry, and Practical Guide to Dragons. I don't know what these are. These might also be this is Wizards of the Coast from the mid aughts. So Wizards of the Coast makes Master to the Gathering, if you did not know. So I will have to see just how nerdy these are because they sound very nerdy to me. Matt was kind enough to also send me some books from my list. If you don't know who Matt is, that's weird because I feel like there's a lot of overlap between my channel and his channel. So he sent me also a copy of 2312 <laughs> uh, by Kim Stanley Robinson, but his is a library book edition so I will probably set this aside for a future whatnot auction unless Matt wants it back in which case Matt I will happily send this back to you but considering you're moving soon 
I think you're pretty okay with that. Or maybe I'll give it away. I don't know. I'll hold on to this until I get to this book uh, and read it and then I'll figure out what to do then for it. Um, but the one Ryan sent me is in better condition. So maybe I'll read the library book and then keep the other one. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, actually, when he announced that he was going to be moving, I asked him since he had recently reviewed uh, Arthur C. Clarke's Rendezvous with Rama if he would be kind enough if I could borrow it or if I could buy it from it because it was one of the books that I was missing. He's like, I'll just send it to you. And so he did which again, Matt, thank you very much. That's very generous of you. So uh, Rendezvous with Rama, pretty much all of Arthur C. Clarke's books also, are the, the most popular ones are really hard to find because this is, again, one of his most popular books in addition to being a Nebula Award winner, it's really hard to find. This has like the same uh, cover art as the edition of Childhood's Inn that I reviewed on the channel, which I will link that up above. So I'm interested to read this, especially given Matt's review of it. To see how we differ because uh, we do differ in our opinions on books which is part of why I really love booktube because it's great. Also let's also we really like talking about books with other people that like to read because uh, people interpret what they experience in their life uh, both with you know actual life experience and also media that they consume through their own lens based on their own personal journey and it gives it, it gives varying results, which I think is really cool. He also sent me from my list Asimov, The Gods Themselves, which again is another book I didn't think I was going to be able to find because Asimov, Asimov, uh, Greg Beer, and uh, Arthur C. Clarke are very into sections in my secondhand bookshop. The only Arthur C. Clarke books that are available are like the Beyond spinoffs of um, the Space the 2001 Space Odyssey, or is it? I think that's the correct number. It's like the 3001 or whatever, all the delineations from that. So this is very exciting. And he also recently read this and decided to pass it on to me. So I could, so thank you very much. I very much appreciate that. This is exciting. It's exciting because I think I only have like 20 books from left to like acquire, which is exciting considering how big that list was but you guys have helped me out a lot my partner went to an estate sale without me because he wanted uh some pew pews and i was not interested but there was also some stuff he thought that i might like and brought him to me and that is this thick stack of asimov he found me the entire foundation trilogy in the matching set at the estate sale so it's foundation second foundation and then Foundation and Empire, a beautiful book without barcodes matching set with the lovely uh, red orange text block. I was just so ecstatic when he brought this. He's like, I thought you'd like these. I was like, oh, you're awesome. Because, yeah, these are from the 1960s. So this is fabulous. So I'm very excited about those. Uh, of course, I'm not going to get to reading them anytime soon, but yeah. Uh, and then Two other Isaac Asimov books. This is Prelude to Foundation, which I'm guessing is the Prelude to Foundation. Who'd have thought that? And then uh, Robots and Empire, uh, which I actually recently sold in a whatnot auction. Uh, so I got it again. Th this book will just keep finding me, but I'll never be able to find Robots of Dawn probably. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But I thought that that was lovely that he realized that I was I'm in the sci-fi world now and I have talked about enough sci-fi in my life to where it is sunk into his brain to know to pick it up for me when he's out and about. Uh, I did actually went to a secondhand uh, bookshop, which I've talked about before on this channel, Secondhand Charles with my mom because she wanted to go. I come by my love of books, honestly, both my mom and my dad are rad, rad, rabid, avid. <laughs> not rabid, avid readers. Uh, my dad reads mostly history and World War II like all dads do. Um, nonfiction predominantly and my mom reads a lot of romance predominantly but it, my mom reads mostly romance novels but she does like if I suggest a book to her she'll read it. She read uh, The Dream Snake uh, by Vonda McIntyre at my uh, behest and I reviewed that as well and she really liked that so if I if I read something I think my mom will like it I pass it on to her so she wanted to go and we got both of us 
a mass amount of books. So I was able to find a couple more items from that Nebula Award list that I was missing. So I found Annihilation uh, by Jeff Vandermeer. This is the movie edition or uh, yeah, it says ma major motion picture, so this is the movie edition. I know some of these have series, like a TV show series. I think American Gods Manual Game, and that's one I'm missing. Uh, apparently, the reason why it's hard for me to find that book is because it's now on a banned book list. So that's why it's hard to get a hold of, because everybody's wanting to get it because it's banned. Um, and it also has a TV show, so. But I got Annihilation, which is awesome that over there with the other ones for this list and then this was weird to me so this was actually in the regular general fiction section and this is Michael Chabon's The Yiddish Policeman's Union a novel so this doesn't seem to be uh fantasy or sci-fi but I don't know uh it might have just been misclassed but I do love these uh trade papers that have the deckle edges uh, mostly because I use this as a bookmark. Don't hate me. This it's, It has like a built-in bookmark to me. Uh, I know that it's sacrilegious for some people, but I, I love the style of trade paper just for that reason. So I have this. I honestly thought this one was going to be the hardest one for me to find, and uh, I, I found it. I just wasn't looking in the right section because I kept looking in fantasy and sci-fi, and that's not where it was. Uh, I also picked... <laughs> I got like 10 books, but there's a whole bunch of other books in here uh, mixed in, so I'm having difficulty remembering which ones I picked up at what store. I think these are the other five paperbacks. No, okay, not this one. So I also picked up uh, Christopher Stashis, A Wizard in the Way. I actually am wanting to try to collect all of Christopher Stashis' books. I have all of his Wizard in Rhyme series, which is where Stegeman comes from here, my, uh, my dragon tattoo. This is Stegeman from Her Majesty's Wizard, which is the first book in uh, Wizard and Rhyme by Christopher Stashief. Um, and so I want to get all of his books to see if the rest of his writing is just as good. And I found out he not only writes fantasy, but he also has a sci-fi series. So I'm wanting them all. So I have A Wizard in the Way. So whenever I see Christopher Stashief at this secondhand bookshop, I pick it up because it's almost never there. I, he, I rarely find any of his books as well. He was very popular in the 80s and early 90s and then just went poof. So, uh, this is The Warlock Enraged by Christopher Stashief as well, another science, uh, science sci fi fantasy. Uh, most of his uh, fantasy books actually have a lot of science in them. Not necessarily science fiction, but science. That's actually how, when I was a teenager, I got interested in uh, quantum theory. I think I read Her Majesty's Wizard and then immediately got uh, is it John Griffin, Schrodinger's Kittens. I'm not gonna be able to find the book now. Anyway, I'll put the book here. So I basically read Her Majesty's Wizard and then wanted to find out more about Schrodinger's cat because it's a character in the book. And then, you know, was on the bus at 14 reading this book, so. <laughs> It's fantasy, but there's a lot of science in it. So if, you, if you've never read Christopher Stashie before, maybe try it. This is Beggars and Choosers. I am still, I this is the second book in the Beggars of Spain series by Nancy Cress. I found the third book. I found the second book. I still have not found the Nebula Award winner, which is Beggars in Spain by Nancy Cress. That is the book I'm looking for, but I figured if I really like it, I probably will want the rest of the books in the series, so I have picked them up. Uh, and then this is Stephen Brust Aguiar. I don't know, I just read the uh, excerpt on the back as to what this book was about, and it seemed really interesting. <laughs> so I decided to go ahead and pick this up. This is a fantasy but it looks like Frankenstein's on the front. I don't know, the cover might just be gross, but I saw it and I saw the side of it and I was like, what is this? So it just seemed interesting to me, so I picked that up. I picked these up at a thrift store. So it was a dollar a piece. So this is Andrea Norton's Warlock and Louis McMaster Bejeweled, Cordelia's Honor. Both of these I picked up at thrift stores for a dollar a piece. I'm not a really big fan of Bane books, but I do want to collect all of Andrea Norton's works. 
Uh, and then I read the back of this one and it also seemed interested. It has a female protagonist as does this one. Uh, and I am a sucker for that. So despite the fact that these are Bane books, I picked them up because they seemed interesting. Uh, these are all books that I bought on whatnot. Uh, this one I bought from Matt. This is an ace double. I Ace doubles are non-existent on the East Coast, at least to me. I've never found one in the wild. I've only ever bought them from Matt or when I went to California myself and went to the bookstores there and bought some. But this is an ace double. It has um, Calvin M. Knox, one of our asteroids is missing, which I've never heard of. And I've also never heard of the author. So I figured it'd be interesting for books without barcodes. And A.E. Van Vaught is someone who I've heard of multiple times here on BookTube. And uh, this is The Twisted Men. Look at that high quality art right there. Very thick lines. Um, but I thought that these would be great for books without barcodes whenever I get to that. Uh, also, I just I just love the floppy, pulpy ace paperbacks from this era. They just are so tactily pleasing to me. Uh, it makes me really happy. Also, when I did do that video of me shopping in California for books, uh, I had a comment that stated that I should have picked this up. <laughs> Uh, but I didn't pick it up when I was there for $2 because this is not accurate language. Uh, so uh, it, it felt a little untoward to me, so I just left it behind. But you're like, good luck finding it again. I did find it again. Uh, it was actually on Whatnot, and I paid the same amount I would have paid at the other thrift store, except I had it shipped to me. So yeah, it was more, but you know, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna say it was the same. So I did get it again, uh, just because I was, I had my hands smacked for not getting it the first time. But this is from 1960, uh, and I'm excited to have found it again. Uh, I also bought these from the same bookseller on Whatnot. I actually found some booksellers besides Matt <laughs> that, that were awesome. Uh, and besides Ryan, the Vintage Viking, I believe he also sells on there as well. Um, so I got The Martian Chronicles by Ray Bradbury. I actually don't have this one. I have almost all of the other Ray Bradbury vintage books, but I don't have the Martian Chronicles, so I picked this up. And for my Nebula Award, I actually managed to get The Left Hand of Darkness in the really cool cover for $3. I was so surprised and so grateful, but uh, yeah, this is one of the Nebula Awards winners that I was looking for. Ursula K. Le Guin, also another author I don't ever see at my secondhand thrift store, so. This is awesome. It's also a book without a barcode, so I'm very excited about that. Her other two, The Dispossessed, and I don't know what the other one is that I'm missing, but those are gonna be hard. Uh, to go with the collecting all of the Andre and Norton books, I found Moon of Three Rings uh, at a local thrift store, so I paid a dollar for this. Uh, and you know, you guys say I might have a hard time finding them all, but I think, I think maybe I can. I know that she, she is very prolific, so I might be able to buy them all. I might not be able to read them all before I die, but you know what? I might get them all before I die. One of those is more more possible than the other one. Uh, I also picked up a bunch of hardcovers when I went shopping with my mom at the secondhand shop. I talked about how much I love um, Brian Jacquet's uh, Redwall series. Uh, I went and this is the only other one of the hardcovers that they had that I didn't own. So this is Taggerling. I have not read this one. Uh, this one is about the otters in the world, I'm guessing, from the cover. But I really do love this series. I have a lot of nostalgia feels for it. Uh, I also managed to find... I finally got around recently to reading both Time Machine and War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. And it's really hard to find any of his books in hardcover without paying like lots of money for them uh, individually. So I went ahead and broke down and bought a hardcover edition of a uh, compilation. Compil comp so I went ahead and broke down and bought one of the compilations that had all of them. This is not the one that I see on everybody's shelves, thankfully. I don't know why I gotta be that girl, why I gotta be different. But this has the time machine 
uh, and The War of the Worlds, but it also has four other ones. It has The Island of Dr. Moreau, The Invisible Man, The First Men on the Moon, and The Food of the Gods. So I have four other books from him that I have not read before that I can. And it is bright blue and beautiful and I love uh, the cover. And this is a leather bound edition. I think this is a Barnes and Noble edition. Or it might be a Canterbury Classic. It is a Canterbury Classic. So that's great. I got the Canterbury Classic that had six different ones. Uh, and I also picked up this Robert Silverberg because it is furry eight people with boobs. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. Uh, <laughs> It's by Warner's Books. It's at Winter's End. I rarely find Silverberg in my area. I know that's one of his not well-known ones, but yeah, maybe I'll have time to read that one. <laughs> I also got Colony Willis's Doomsday book. Uh, I just thought that this was cool. I don't know if this is this. I think this might have been one of the Nebula Award winners. Excited to get into that. Also picked up Hellspark by Janet Kagan, which I am very excited to read on this channel. This is the one of two books that this author has written and it's the only book that isn't tied to a major uh, property. So the only book, other book she wrote was for Star Trek. So this is her only standalone novel that's not tied to a series. Uh, so, and this is actually available for free on Google Books if you're interested. You don't actually have to find the book because it's going to be really hard actually to find the book. <laughs> this is actually way more valuable than they had it at the store. So that was a nice find. Um, and also, you know, I, can, I finally found a book that I can recommend to you that you don't have to find or buy a copy of. You could actually just read for free if you wanted to. And then I found Spacelink by... Doris Peschera from the 70s and it just had this weird brontosaurus looking dude and then like weird brontosaurus babies with what looks like the bat signal back there. Uh, this looks bad. This looks like typical sci-fi b-movie bad. <laughs> uh, this is supposed to be a, a YA book when I looked it up so I'm, I'm expecting absolutely nothing from this other than a good time. And then the last three books I want to show you are what I am most excited about. So I have reviewed every single book in the Cradle series that has been published so far by Will White. And I consumed them all via Audible and that is because I have mentioned that unless I can find it in the wild secondhand, uh, I do not buy paperback books. I buy hardcovers and Will White is an independent publisher. Um, Hidden Gnome Publishing is his uh, publishing company and he does everything through Amazon and he did a Kickstarter in order to be able to put his books into other bookstores besides Amazon and part of the Kickstarter was to get the leather bound copies of the first three books in his series in addition to like the paperbacks or whatever. It was a fundraiser to one get fancy hardcover books if you wanted to or regular hardcover books or paperback books it just depends on how much money you're willing to give them so i gave him a stupid amount of money so i could get these i got the first three books because that's all he was offering in the faux leather down hardcover edition of the cradle series so i have unsold which has the beautiful symbol there it is a signed and numbered edition. This is, which is funny to me because this is 1059, this is 1059 out of 5700. And these two are uh, 1058 out of 5900. So I don't, I don't understand that, but whatever. So first book, which is unsold. And we have Soul Smith beautiful blue with the gilding. Like I said, Will 1058 out of 5900 or 5500. I'm sure his hand was tired at this point. He just didn't want to play anymore. And Black Flame, which is gorgeous. Oh my god, I love it. <laughs> um, again, this so might be 5500 based on the sloppiness of that. So I'm guessing most people bought the first book. Uh, in the nice fancy edition and didn't want the rest of them. So that might be why that one is 159 out of 57 and these are 5,500. But 
I now have them in hardcovers and they're beautiful and I really hope uh, that he is going to, once he gets the last book out, so the 12th book in the Cradle series, the final book in the Cradle series is supposed to release later this year. He has just recently released the first book in his new Space series uh, this month, actually this week. Um, so of course that delayed the last book of the Cradle series because he wanted the new property out beforehand. So we'll see what happens. I really do hope that he, one, this launch into actual stores is successful. So that way I don't just have three books in the Cradle series and hardcovers and I can eventually buy all of them in this gorgeous, gorgeous edition because this is this is shelf candy and I love it and I'm excited about it. I love it so much. I also just wanted to see if the experience of the books is going to be different reading them for myself versus consuming them via Audible. I'm guessing so, but we'll see. So that is this massive book haul. Believe it or not, I have enough books downstairs to do a second one, but we'll just leave those for a later day. But I will see you guys in the next video. Matt, thank you very much. Ryan, thank you very much. I do appreciate both of you uh, sending me books to help with this Nebula challenge. And I will see you guys uh, hopefully with one of those reviews very soon. Till then, bye. Bye. Hi, Editing Bob here. So if you guys are interested in checking out whatnot for yourself and seeing if you can also find some rare and vintage sci-fi and fantasy books, I will put a link down in the description. I'm also personally having an auction myself on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so I hope to see you there.